Next on the RCWR show, yours truly puts on the thinking cap. It's time to bust out the Booker pen, and I'm going to try to figure out who all is going to walk away victorious from Sunday's TNA lockdown pay-per-view from the Aladome in San Antonio, Texas. You don't want to miss this as we're going to hook you up with the very latest updated card for Sunday's pay-per-view as more matches were announced after Impact Wrestling Live went off the air this Thursday night. It's the RCWR show. Call that match special. You know how we do it over here. It begins right now. The following is an Infinity One Productions presentation. Keeping it honest, insightful, interactive. Covering the latest in wrestling and beyond. You're listening to the RCWR show with Lee Sanders and Diamond K. Welcoming you to our Call That Match special edition of the RCWR Show. I'm your host, the Black Avenger, a.k.a. the Black Azrael, Lee Sanders. Thank you all so much for checking out this episode on March 9th, 2013. I hope you all are having a good weekend so far. I hope those of you wrestling fans are ready for another good dose of wrestling as we're going to be getting a great kick-ass pay-per-view from TNA as it's the ninth annual lockdown pay-per-view. Now, you all know that this is going to be pretty historical when it's all said and done. This is definitely going to be a pay-per-view that a lot of us are going to be walking away and we're going to be talking about, as remember... Beginning March 14th, in just a handful of days, TNA Wrestling begins going on the road. They're going to start bringing Impact Wrestling to various cities in the U.S. So this pay-per-view that they got coming up, it's going to have to be a home run without a doubt. And you know, one thing that should be pointed out, which I thought was very interesting, you know, from 2005 to last year... Lockdown always had every single match contested inside of a steel cage. This Lockdown pay-per-view is going to be the first time that it's been modified in a way where we're going to see a mix of regular matches along with cage matches. Now, I know some people may be a little bit disappointed with that, but... It's still going to be a kick-ass event, nonetheless. Now, what I want to do for you boys and girls today is I want to rewind it back to what you might have missed from Impact Showdown Radio this past Thursday night with myself and co-host Diamond K as we were offering predictions on who all is going to be walking away victorious from Sunday's lockdown pay-per-view. Now, you got to bear with us at the time as we only dealt with the card as it was announced by Impact Wrestling as seen on Spike TV. But since then, more matches have been announced, so we'll hook you guys up with the very latest. But first, I just want to rewind it back to Thursday night. Myself, Diamond K, offering match predictions for Sunday's Lockdown Pay-Per-View. We'll come right back, and I'll go on ahead and I'll run down the full card. We'll go over it one more time. And we'll also include the new matches that have been announced. So, kick on back and enjoy. And as you're listening to this episode, hey, you know we have a chat room that's open right now at blogtalkradio.com. You're more than welcome to jump on in there, interact with me during the course of this episode. You can also offer your match predictions in the chat room as well. Hey, don't feel like chatting it up in there? Hey, we got Twitter as well. Hit us up at the RCWR Show. We just launched that not too long ago. See, we've been getting a good amount of likes and follows from folks. Hey, we appreciate that love and support. You can also follow us at our usual Twitter handle at Infinity One Prod. And I highly recommend you definitely hit us up on there for the more personal interactions as the RCWR show is just strictly for giving you guys show information whatever upcoming shows we're going to be doing the time the dates all that good stuff all right so let's go on ahead and let's rewind it back now to this past Thursday night impact showdown radio with myself Diamond K talking about the lockdown pay-per-view here we go folks I know we got Jeff Hardy versus Bully Ray Steel Cage match, TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Who you got right there? Uh, 
I, I got the title change in hands there. Mm. When do we see a rematch? You think you think it's going to play out on an episode of Impact Wrestling or? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Okay. Cause yeah. I know they got those little gaps in there now. Okay. Yeah. Got... Which I think which I think is good. I think these gaps are good. Let's see who else we got. I, I'm looking. I can jump out there right now. I can jump out there right now. I'm gonna go. Hmm. I'm gonna go with Jeff Hardy on that one. I'm, I'm gonna go. Okay. I'm gonna go with Jeff Hardy. I, I just. I don't. I don't think it's time just yet. I don't. I don't think they're done with Jeff Hardy uh, just yet. I, I think there's a couple of more pay-per-views they can get out of him before that title changes hands. I see him holding it for at least two more pay-per-views. Uh, wow. Yeah. That would be yeah. what Bound for Glory then, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. We got uh, Team TNA, Sting, Magnus, Samoa Joe, James Storm, and Eric Young taking on Aces and Nates, Devon, Mr. Anderson, Mike Knox, Doc from Aces and Nates, and Garrick Bischoff. Yeah, what's that, Doc? That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I have the uh, the clubhouse uh, taking home the uh, victory. Yeah, big clubhouse. revelation there with D'Lo Brown yeah. being VP. Oh, yeah. They need a little momentum. They, yeah, aces and eights all the way. Uh, Kurt well, that, Angle versus... That's a little... They, they got a little momentum with D'Lo. They need a lot of momentum. <laughs> they, 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 need a, they need a lot more, yeah. They need a lot more. How about... Kurt Angle versus Wes Briscoe. I'm looking at this one, and and for some weird reason, I just don't see Kurt Angle getting the job done. Oh my gosh! I I really I, I you know if he if he loses, that's going to mean that this is going to prolong, um, and I don't think that they're done with this. So you're, yeah, uh, but I I would like to think that that Kurt could. Could beat uh, West Briscoe. Yeah, any damn day of the week, he he could probably do something that uh, the guys over at the other company had did there those couple of weeks with the uh, one arm tied behind the back and the uh, yeah ass. yeah yeah. Kurt Angle got, got that boy hands down. Uh, so we're both in agreement. It, it looks like it's going to be West Briscoe then for the W. Right. Uh, uh, right. Velvet Sky versus Gail Kim. Um, I, I think we're both in agreement on Velvet. that one. Yeah, Velvet Sky, unfortunately. Yeah. Sorry, Gail Kim fans, but um, Velvet seems to be the way to go. And uh, I've definitely been very uh, vocal on Velvet Sky. I don't. I don't think you know she. Uh, I don't think she should be holding the title, honestly. But I mean, they're gonna run with her. But uh, I think Gail Kim will one day get the belt back. Maybe it could happen on a episode of Impact Live. You know, keep your fingers crossed. Bobby Roode and Austin Aries will be taking on Bad Influence. Christopher Daniels and Kazarian taking on Chavo Guerrero and Hernandez. Three-way dance for the TNA World Tag Team titles. Uh, I, I'm going to to say um, Daniels, uh, Daniels and Kazarian, victorious here. Hmm. Two part question comes into my mind when I look at this match. Bobby Roode has left his dance partner just dangling in the wind two weeks in a row now. Yep. Could could he do it? Again this Sunday. That that's what I'm really wondering right now. Um, if Rude does show up, then I have Rude and Austin Aries retaining. If Rude doesn't show up, then yeah, I can see Daniels and Kazarian. I think we both are in agreement. The tag belts don't need to go back to Chavo and Hernandez. No, no, no. No, that's just a snore fest. Yeah, yeah, they they they've milked that for all it's worth already. We don't need to see that again. Uh, let me see one more match. I believe it is the Robbie E versus Rob Terry. So 
something I can kind of get behind right here. It looks like we're starting to see the beginning of a uh, Big Rob Terry push. I'm all in. I'm I'm for Big Rob. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I will jump out there, though, and say that although it could be a squash match, I don't quite see it ending right here. I think they're going to continue on TV. I, I think we could see them dance at least maybe three more times after Sunday. Mm. Yeah, that, that's 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 possible. Well, I mean, do we really want to see that, though? I think it would be interesting, and at the same time, it would give Robbie something to do. I mean, he's just yeah. really just been, you know, it's like, what's going on with Robbie, you know? And, and I can kind of tell that TNA kind of, the writers at least, it seems like they kind of favor him a little bit more than Joey Ryan. And that kind of speaks volumes to me right there. Yeah, definitely. I agree. You know, yeah. So, I mean, I'd, I'd like to see him continue, you know, just, you know, they don't want to have it drag out. I don't see this going into uh, the next pay-per-view. I, I can see them maybe doing a little something on open fight night. They have another match. Um, and then, you know, maybe something a couple of weeks later, you know, they can go at it again. Maybe Sting or Hulk Hogan, they can sit up and say, okay, look, you know, you guys, y'all got to squash this once and for all. This is what's going to go down. You know, win, lose, draw, that's it. This is done. And uh, basically we see Big Rob Terry, you know, he finally wins the war and he moves on from Robbie E. Uh, that'd be a good way to play it out. Um, I know Kenny Kingston had said that he was going to be making an appearance. Who do you think he might uh, end up facing? Because I believe he put the challenge out there that anyone that thinks they can step up to him, they're more than welcome to try to take him on. But who do you see possibly taking him on? Uh, it's really hard to say. Um, maybe... You think somebody like Zima would be would be a nice, uh, you know? I don't think it needs to be somebody we haven't seen in a while. Christian York. Yeah, I, I think you're probably right there. Christian York. I mean, the guy's phenomenal in the ring. You know, even if it's just to come to uh, drop to uh, um, to Kingston, I, I'd love to you know see him come on back and. You know, I've always been entertained. You know, he hasn't really been wrestling that long for them, but each time he's done a little something, I, I've been really impressed with his work. I'd like to see him. Um, I don't really want to see Rob Van Dam, but I'm just getting, no. you know, I'm getting that Highlander feeling that we could possibly see Rob Van Dam pop up and get squashed again. So, you I know. hope I, I hope not. I, I hope it's Christian York. I mean, um yeah, you know, it's funny that you mentioned him. Um, I, I booked him for uh, for a show uh, here in 2012, um, and uh, so yeah, so it was definitely good to see him getting his opportunity uh, on on Impact Wrestling. He lives in uh, Virginia, and um, yeah, it, it, it's just good to, to see him. He's a good guy, and uh, and it's, it's very good talent. So it's definitely uh, he's he's a veteran. And uh, he, he definitely needs uh, needs to be seen. And we're back. And once again, folks, that was from this past Thursday night on Impact Showdown Radio with myself and co-host Diamond K. Now, if you all have not checked out the Dynamic Duos on Thursday night covering Impact Wrestling, you definitely want to make sure that you do. As this past Thursday night, we had a really great in-depth show i mean we went past our usual time we almost came close to about two hours and it was a great episode i highly encourage you to backtrack once you're done listening to this and check it out as we were talking uh great in-depth about the revelation of d brown being vp of aces and eights we also had special guests the one and only long time a uh, special guest of the RCWR show. He's been with us pretty much since day one. The famous Justin Reno. He had offered his thoughts on the passing of Paul Bearer as he was one of the last people to had 
been able to get the opportunity to work with the WWE legend as the late Paul Bear had participated in one of his final m matching uh, events if you will, as far as being a manager goes, which was down at Pro Wrestling Blitz. And it was some really good stuff right there. We also had read some of you all's comments from YouTube that offered your thoughts on the passing of William Moody, a.k.a. Paul Bearer. So, highly recommend you guys backtrack, check it out. It was a really great, solid episode. You won't be disappointed. And for the very latest and what you might have missed from TNA Impact Wrestling... You are always welcome to check us out every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern right here on blogtalkradio.com slash the RCWR show. Shout out to our YouTube subscribers. You all know what you all will get. You'll get a remixed version of our episodes of Impact Showdown Radio for you guys. Minus the commercials, all that good stuff. More hyped up audio, a little bit more cleaner. Good stuff for you guys, as always. Try to look out for everybody, but special shout-out to our YouTube subscribers so you know what you guys are going to be able to check out. And, uh, yeah, check it out every Thursday night. Some really great stuff. Me, co-host, Diamond K. If you aren't able to catch us live, hey, you can always check it out on YouTube. You can even check it out on the downloads in the iTunes marketplaces, also on Stitcher. Just use the keywords, the RCWR show. All right, we're going to take a very brief commercial break, but when we come right back, we'll go through the overall card one more time. As I mentioned at the beginning of the show, new matches were announced for Sunday's pay-per-view. We'll give you guys the 411 and I'll give you my thoughts on some of these matches that were announced and who I think might be walking away victorious from them. You're listening to the RCWR show. Call that match special. We'll be coming right back, folks. For news you can use, like us on Facebook during this commercial break at Infinity One Productions. Welcome back to the RCWR show. Lee Sanders here. Hey, before we continue, I just want to take this time out once again to thank those of you, our listeners, whether you're listening to this right now on blogtalkradio.com or you're checking this out on Stitcher, iTunes, on the downloads, wherever you may be checking this out right now. I just want to take this time out to thank you all, especially those of you that went out of your way to hop on over to our YouTube channel and gave your thoughts on the passing of William Moody, a.k.a. Paul Bearer. The comments just continue to come in, and we definitely appreciate all of you that took the time out to offer your thoughts. Some very emotional stuff uh, that y'all had said, very passionate stuff. Really, when you think about it, this was a man that was just truly loved by everybody in the wrestling business. Nobody had anything bad to say about him, and this is definitely one that really hurts because you just think about all the wrestlers that he has managed and the ones that just really jump out there off the break, of course, is Undertaker, Kane, Mankind, and then for your old school wrestling fans, you think about Rick Rude, you think about stunning Steve Austin. I mean, you know, it's just an A-list of who's who that he was able to manage. And, you know, I had promised you all last time around that we were going to read just a few of you all's comments uh, from there. So that's definitely what I would like to do right now before we continue. I'm just going to read just a couple of comments. Uh, let's kick it off with Zapula. That's how the name looks like. It's supposed to be pronounced. I could be wrong, but in either case, they say, I can't believe that he is dead. The what's up people? They said, Brothers of Destruction should reunite tonight on SmackDown. Of course, he was talking about Friday Night SmackDown, but uh, I don't believe that is what had happened. Uh, Michael Ramos, father of destruction, gone. And the cause of death was blood clogged. Now, just to update you, you guys 
on what all had went down. Moody was reported having upper respiratory infection down in Chicago last week, basically the week before. And he was under a doctor's care and he was put on medication for that infection. Now, he attended a reunion event in a wheelchair. Now, according to TMZ, they had a knowledge that Moody told people he was undergoing treatment for respiratory issues, and it was noted that he was coughing and having trouble standing up for lengthy periods of time. Now, the Cauliflower Alley Club president, Cowboy Bob Kelly, he also had told TMZ that Moody went to the hospital following the event. So that kind of gives you an update on what all's been going on with that and uh, haven't yet heard what's been going down with funeral arrangements. And of course, as always, we stress to you any more information that we're able to get on this as we are paying attention very closely to this story. We'll definitely provide you more updates as we're able to get a hold of it. Let's continue on and just read a couple of more comments from some of the YouTube uh, folks that posted their thoughts uh, let's go with Ismary17. This sucks. Kane and Undertaker should reform as Brothers of Destruction for one show and have a Night of Destruction in memory of a bear. Seems to be the main theme that's going on here right now from some folks. They want to see the BOD get back together. James Murphy, Kane, Mick Foley, and Undertaker should be the main wrestlers to pay tribute to Paul. That's not to say I don't want other wrestlers to pay tribute to him, but of all wrestlers, it should be those three. Goodbye, Paul. You will be missed. Rest in peace. I just want to read two more for you guys. Let's go with Cal Kavanaugh. I have a feeling that Paul Bear will be in the WWE Hall of Fame in 2013. I believe he is on to something right there. Let's go with Romeo Kid 69 and this will be the last comment that we'll read. I am deeply sad and to learn of the passing of Bill Moody. Working in the business in one way for another 25 years, I've met the man on numerous occasions. One of the sweetest people ever, very approachable and willing to help and give advice to anyone. The Percy Pringle character was priceless, and the Paul Bear character was iconic, and he was able to bring you a realness to it, as is actually what he did for a living. Rest in peace, Mr. Moody. You have certainly earned it. Thank you, sir. Like I said, not one bad thing has been said about the passing of William Moody, a.k.a. Percy Pringle, a.k.a. Paul Bearer. We'd like to just humbly thank those of you that have went to our YouTube channel and posted those comments. And you're more than welcome to offer your comments as well. Hop on over. It's at The RCWR Show. Once again, on YouTube at The RCWR Show. Of course, William Moody, no stranger to TNA Wrestling. There was that one year that he had worked for the promotion as Percy Pringle III. And I thought it was a very classy touch what we had saw this past Thursday night on Impact Wrestling Live. As it opened up with that nice steel image of William Moody saying in loving memory of and then just about an hour, maybe about an hour 15 into the show... We had that gut check segment there that looked like it was getting totally out of control as the crowd was not feeling Lady Tampa. They did not want her getting that TNA contract. Bruce Pritchard just trying to quiet the, the crowd down, trying to calm them down. And that whole plug that he gave about Bear there, nice, classy, just total classy. TNA Wrestling even going out of their way to acknowledge him on their website, which I thought was just really kick-ass right there. So that alone just lets you know how much of an impact he has made on the sport. Truly a wrestling icon that definitely will be missed. Alright, so let's talk about the card for lockdown. Now you guys had heard right before we went on a commercial break what had went down on this past Thursday's Impact Showdown Radio. But let's go on ahead now and let's go over the card. I'm going to be throwing in some new matches in there. As I said, some new stuff was announced right after Impact Wrestling 
had went off the air. It basically had came Friday on. So here we go. Let's start from the very top. We got something new. All right. So looks like going down at lockdown, we're going to see the one and only who wants a mustache ride himself, Joey Ryan, taking on Joseph Park. Now, just just marinate on that for a couple of seconds. Let's pause. Joey Ryan, Joseph Park. Now, for those of you that do listen to Impact Showdown Radio, you know very well that me and Diamond K, we were talking about Joey Ryan, and I actually kind of made a little bit of a joke. I said, hey, what the hell is going on with Joey Ryan? This guy hasn't been showing up for Impact at least in almost a month, and yet he's sitting up saying, watch Impact Wrestling, and he's not even on the day going thing. So I thought that this was a little bit weird as we do know that there's a couple of people in TNA that do check out our show from time to time. Um, we're not going to mention any names, but we are aware there are a couple of people that check it out. And uh, I thought that this was very interesting that this match was just literally thrown together. It's like just taking two pieces of bread and just putting it in between any old damn thing and calling it a meal, calling it a sandwich. That's how I'm looking at when I think about this particular match. This is nothing more than a filler match. This is nothing more than a go grab a pitcher of beer, go take a break in the bathroom, whatever you want to do, what you got to do. This is pretty much intermission right here. I mean, my God, man, I'm looking at Joseph Park, and I'm just saying to myself, wait a minute now, Joseph Park, he's been doing all this stuff that he's been doing to try to get his hands on aces and eights, and I just think that it's kind of a little bit sad now that aces and eights is now behind him, and he's just moving on with this supposed wrestling career. And, you know, I know that this is all about Joseph Park trying to get over. And when I look at this match, I, you know, I, I can kind of see it from the Joseph Park side. But then I look at what's been happening with Joey Ryan. And it just seems like ever since Joey Ryan was separated from Matt Morgan... Joey's just been dangling there. He just hasn't really found any type of a rivalry, no type of a program to really sink his teeth into. And I don't think that's his fault. I think it's the fault of TNA writing. But then again, maybe there's a little bit more to this story. I mean, I know that Joey had left uh, Pro Wrestling Gorilla a while back and He's been trying to commit to TNA Wrestling uh, completely. Of course, he is still doing some work down there for Empire Wrestling. But, you know, really, when I just think about TNA within recent months, they just really haven't been utilizing the man as much as they were when he was doing the whole Joey Ryan has a YouTube account and he's going on his little TNA tirade. It just seems like the fizzle is gone that... It is just gone completely. And I would like to look at this match and honestly say to myself, okay, maybe this could be the night that Joy Ryan takes his game up to that next level. Maybe this could be the beginning of a reignited Joy Ryan. But unfortunately, I don't see that happening. I think right now, this is all about Joseph Park continuing to get those W's in his column. So I'm going to go with Joseph Park for the win. I know we got some hardcore Joy Ryan fans that may not like that. But again, I'm going with Joseph Park. Honestly, I think this match j shouldn't even happen. It's, it's quite sad that it's just being thrown together. There's no storyline. There's nothing you can get behind. But I know it's going to be entertaining as hell, especially with the Joseph Park character and having his little flip out abyss moments. That's probably something we could maybe expect in his match with Joy Ryan. I would expect that maybe Joy Ryan would kind of look a little bit dominant at first. Um, maybe try to do a couple of dirty tactics, try to play a couple of hit games, hit sight games, and that could probably get Joseph 
having a hawk out moment and turning to abyss briefly. But Joseph Park for the win. Let's move along now. All right, here's another match that, again, me and Diamond were talking about this past Thursday. We thought it was a very interesting that Kenny King had put a challenge out there on Impact Wrestling that he's going to be going to lockdown and he's going to be issuing a challenge to anyone he thinks can step up to the plate, but that he would do whatever is necessary to keep his X Division title and he's going to show the world what he's willing to do to keep that title for that matter. And I remember kicking back and offering a couple of names of folks I would like to see take on Kenny Kingston for that title. One of the names that I mentioned was Christian York. I passionately said I love Christian York. I think he's a phenomenal athlete. I think it would be a fresh match to see. I know Diamond had agreed with that. He also had brought up Zima Ion. Uh, I know we brought up uh, Mr. Boomstick himself, Jay Bradley. So, I'm very pleased to see that for the X Division Championship, and me and Diamond can both be very pleased with this one, as we were both very, very keen on not having Rob Van Dam try to compete for this title. Well, we got our wish, folks. And those of you that are tired of seeing RVD associated with the X Division having that title, he's not in this match. We have the one and only Christian York and Zima Ion trying to take that title away from Kingston as it's going to be a triple threat match. Now, this one should definitely be one of the match stealers of the night you want to break this down, you know, when you look at these three guys, you look at that new mean streak that Kingston has, he's got that whole swagger, he's got that arrogance, he's got a lot of cockiness in him, I love that, I love that, I mean, this guy has just really been coming out more and more nicely, I've actually been kind of enjoying this new demeanor of his, more than the work that he was doing there in Ring of Honor Wrestling. Now, I'm not saying that the Ring of Honor Wrestling work was bad. I'm just saying from that character standpoint, I'm enjoying what I've been seeing come out of Kingston as of late when I compare it to his time in Ring of Honor. And uh, I'm looking at my boy Christian York phenomenal guy, a beast, monster of a guy, great physique, awesome moveset, I, I just love this man, Zima Ion, hey, I, I can't say enough about Zima Ion, I've always felt that that kid is just really underrated, he's not really utilized properly, he's always sitting on the sidelines, it seems, I'm really glad that he is in this match and he has a little bit of time to shine. And let's not forget, he was a pretty damn good X Division champion. You're looking at this match, you can't help but say to yourself, is Kingston in a little bit of a bad spot right here? It very well could be, but honestly, from a booking standpoint, if it was me hooking this match up, I see no reason why at this point why Kingston should lose the X Division title, especially after he just won it two weeks ago on an episode of Impact Wrestling. Let's continue to go with Kingston. He's the hot guy right now. He's got a good ton of momentum. Let's see him ride that out. I think he's going to be showcasing some pretty damn good skills in this match and really prove what he is willing to do to keep that title. But what I'm hoping for after this, I'm hoping that maybe we can see Kingston and York continue some type of a program. I think that would really be freaking awesome, especially if you're able to eventually throw in Jay Bradley in there as well. I think that would be some uh, pretty interesting stuff right there. But I'm going with Kingston for the retain. All right, next match, we got Robbie E taking on former buddy. He's no longer on the list, of course. Big Rob Terry. Now, we all know how this match had played 
about how it all went down. This was basically Robbie E. getting back at Big Rob for basically turning his back on him. And, uh, you know, you're looking at this match, and honestly, I'm, I'm liking this. I'm liking the fact that it seems TNA is finally starting to get behind Big Rob Terry. And, uh, you know, honestly... I got I got Big Rob winning this one. I got him having the first strike right here, but I don't think it's going to be over. Now, see, there's part of me that's kind of leaning more towards Robbie E getting the win. But I don't think that would be the way to go. I, I think, honestly, you want to kind of get that W over on Big Rob's side first. I mean, there's those couple of weeks there where Robbie E's had his number. Remember, there was that one week where he gave him the bitch slap. Then you had the next week where he hit him with the uh, list board there. So, Big Rob, he's got to get a little bit of retribution because he's already been embarrassed as it is. I think he would just kind of look a little devalued if Robbie E was able to get a win over him. But, but, I can't stress this enough. Just because Big Rob is able to get that W over Robbie E. It doesn't mean that this rivalry is going to be over. I think the two of these guys will continue to do a little something for the next couple of weeks. Could it extend to another pay-per-view? Definitely not. But I do see these two guys continuing to do their thing on TV, and honestly, I, I think it's good timing. Honestly, anything I can see to, you know, uh, from that watching standpoint, anything I can see from Robbie E. on a weekly basis, I'm happy with, because honestly, I think Robbie E., he's so freaking underrated. He, you know, he, he's pretty freaking awesome. I mean, before Zima Ion, Robbie E. was the damn man, and it kind of seemed like once Zima came in there, Robbie kind of took a little bit of a backseat there. But, you know, eventually what I would like to see happen is Robbie maybe venture off into the tag division. I'd like to see him team up with Zima Ion. I think that would be a very interesting stable right there in itself. Big Rob, he's done the whole tag division before and all that. I'd like to continue to see him do his singles run who knows maybe it could actually lead him into the x division to maybe who knows take on kenny kingston for that title taste of things to come food for thought folks but for this one i'm going with big rob t and in our next match, we got the Tag Team Championships on the line as Daniels and Kazarian take on Bobby Roode and Austin Aries and taking on Chavo Guerrero and Hernandez. Triple Threat Tag Dance for the TNA Tag Titles. Now, I still feel the same way as I do from this past Thursday night. I really do not see any reason why the titles would change hands um, unless Bobby Roode doesn't show up for this pay-per-view as we had those two weeks there that we didn't get Bobby Roode, kind of left Austin Aries dangling in the wind there. The only way I can see the title changing hands is if Bobby Roode does it again. He doesn't show up to defend the titles with Aries. But even at that, I don't see Chavo and Guerrero getting the tag belts back. I would see the tag belts going over to Daniels and Kazarian first before Chavo and Hernandez get it back. However, if Rude does show up, I strongly believe that Rude and Aries will continue to retain. They've been a little bit on ice the past couple of weeks. They really need this win. If I'm kicking back and I'm booking this, I got Bobby Roode, Austin Aries picking up the win. I want to continue to see them do their little crusade of trying to win every single TNA title in the company. I want to see them push that. I think they had something very interesting going on there. And honestly, I can't remember the last time 
I've seen two men that practically had all the titles in the company. It's about damn time. And I don't really want to go the Bully Ray Devon route because that's tag titles. I'm talking about just having all the titles on just like two people in a company. It's been a long time since we've seen something like that go down. And I'm just thinking in wrestling period, doesn't matter what the promotion is. Been a while since we've seen it. So I want to see that happen. Daniels and Kazarian, they'll be just fine. They can afford to take a loss in this match. Same thing goes for Chavo and Hernandez. It's it's really not going to hurt either one of these teams. And honestly, Daniels and Kazarian, they're almost at a point right now where it's not even really about the tag belts, quite honestly. It's just about making the other people look good. And at the same time, they make themselves look good as they just continue to evolve especially Kazarian really loving his work but for this one I'm going safe right here I'm going with Bobby Roode and Austin Aries for the retain let's talk about that TNA knockouts title match that's pretty much a squash match right there there's really no reason to analyze that for what it's worth I mean we got the knockouts champion Velvet Sky defending her title against Gail Kim now History is not going to be on Gail Kim's side this time around when it comes to lockdown. Remember, she revealed a very interesting statistic on Impact this past week, telling Velvet Sky that she's undefeated when it comes to lockdown. Also rubbing it in that she's beaten Velvet Sky before, and she did beat the former Knockouts champion, recent champion at that Tara. So, Gail Kim on a little bit of a hot streak, but I don't really think that's going to matter when it comes down to it. I think Velvet Sky, and we know there are tons of Miss Sky fans. They love seeing those pigeons being let loose. I'm definitely one of those guys. Hey, some of us, we may not like the fact that she has the title right now, but I really don't see at this point, especially when it's still very early, see no reason why Velvet would lose the title. I'm a huge Gail Kim fan. I love all the work that she does in that ring, but I just don't see on this night coming up why she would be able to walk away from the Allodome as the new Knockouts Champion. Not just yet. Velvet Sky for the retain, hands down. All right, and of course, we have Wes Briscoe from Aces and Eights. He's going to be taking on the Olympic gold medalist, the Olympic machine, Kurt Angle, in a steel cage match. Now, we got to keep in mind what had went down with Kurt Angle last week, Acting like the goddamn Batman, and he was taking the fight to the Aces and Nates, beating down all the members, leading up to VP, unmasking him. Turns out it was D'Lo Brown. But, once again, we had saw Aces and Nates try to get a little bit of a jump on him this past Thursday night. Could Kurt Angle be in a position right here where he gets a little bit of a payback? Just think about the long history that he has going on right here with Wes Briscoe. It was Kurt Angle that brought him in the TNA. And look how everything just kind of backfired. Because this be the night that Kurt Angle gets a little bit of retribution. I just don't see that happening right now. I, I think right now... With the revelation of VP being D'Lo Brown, you know, I, I need to see Aces and Nates look pretty strong going outside of lockdown. And I got to go with Wes Briscoe when you really think about it. This is his first singles match at a pay-per-view. Sorry, I've got to go with Wes Briscoe right here. Kurt Angle, he's done it before. He's done it time and time again. I'm booking this right. I've got to put Wes Briscoe over Kurt Angle. Briscoe needs a little bit of momentum. He needs something. You know, he needs to get those fans worked up. That's how I'm really looking at this right now. A win for Kurt Angle, it really does nothing for him. And actually, it would send mixed signals 
to fans that maybe aces and aids they've almost run their course and quite honestly i just don't think we're done with aces and eights just yet especially when we still need to figure out who who is basically connected to it all who is the brains behind aces and eights orchestrating it telling these guys what to do when to do it where to do it so for this first major singles match at a pay-per-view for west briscoe he's got to get the win hands down all right in our next match we have those damn aces and eights west briscoe doc mike knox mr anderson and devon they're going to be taking on Sting, Magnus, Samoa Joe, the Cowboy, James Storm, and Showtime, Eric Young. Remember, since Aces and Eights had won that best two out of three falls match from this past Thursday night, they actually won the right to have an extra man in their corner. And let me not say two out of three falls. It was actually a best two out of three matches that they had won. So they get an extra man. The real question right now is, is somebody going to be doing double duty? Are we going to be seeing Wes Briscoe again? Or are we maybe going to get someone new added into the mix? That's the real question I'm wondering right here. Uh, don't be too surprised if maybe... West might do double duty, or if we get introduced to a new person for Aces and Eights. And, you know, I'm kind of looking at this right here, and I can't kind of kick back and just think from that whole shock value perspective. You know, there was footage that Impact Wrestling had showed from this past Thursday night of cameramen trying to find AJ Styles down in Georgia, and they stumbled upon him again. Looked like he was talking to some guy in front of a old shack. But it went by so fast that if you didn't pause the, uh, the footage and look at it frame for frame, you would have missed it. Luckily, I was able to catch it, and I was actually one of the first people that had put the tweet out there. Looks like AJ Styles was talking to a member of Aces and Eights. Had the vests on, had the patches, all that stuff. Whole nine yards. So, you know, it makes you wonder, is AJ Styles part of Aces and Eights? And I'm just kind of thinking from that shock value standpoint, if I'm booking this right, for this particular match, you're talking about a bonus man being part of aces and eights i don't really think it would make that much sense to have west briscoe do double duty i think it would make more sense for aces and eights to say yeah we've got our man you all will know who it is later on in the night and then you have the match go down and then they're doing the daggone thing six man hasn't shown up yet then all of a sudden, you see AJ Styles, he comes out, and he actually helped Aces and Eights. And you can kind of kick back and say, oh my god, this is the night that AJ Styles turned his back on TNA Wrestling. And I would just think that would send people home in just a frenzy and just be kind of pissed off. But at the same time, look very forward to what all is going to be going down on Impact Wrestling for next week as AJ Styles is supposed to be popping up in Chicago so very interesting stuff right there but again that's how I would book it I'm looking for a little bit of shock value right there now with the match itself I've got to go with aces and eights I, I gotta see these guys continue to dominate right here and notice right here that vp isn't even in this so you know are we going to possibly see aj and d -Lo brown or are we just maybe going to see d -Lo? i think it could be a combination of both of those but again i'm looking for aces and nates to get the big w right here 
All right, and of course, you know we saved the best for last, boys and girls. We got one more match for you all, and it is time. It is time to talk about that main event match for the World Heavyweight Championship as it will be contested inside of a steel cage as TNA Champion Jeff Hardy will be defending it against, do you know my name, Bully Ray. Now, me and Diamond K, we talked about this match, but I just want to go just slightly a little bit more in depth about this match. Okay, so, we got to think about what all we've been seeing so far leading up to this match, which really hasn't been much. But from what we've been able to see, we're told that this, you know, that this is basically going to be a match that is going to be classic, that this is going to be a match that everybody is going to be talking about. We even had the TNA general manager, Hawk Hogan, show up on crutches and say that whoever wins this TNA title is really going to be the future of this company as the champion is taking us into a new era. And that new era, of course, being TNA going on the road, bring Impact Wrestling to fans everywhere. Now, bearing all that in mind, I can't help but kick back and say to myself, okay, is it finally time to pull the trigger? Does Bully Ray become the man? Or does Jeff Hardy retain? Now see, we're talking about shock value and all that. If you guys had listened to Impact Showdown Radio this past Thursday, you know Diamond K had kicked back and he said that eventually something's going to come out. Maybe... It all turns out that it's one Brooke Hogan that's behind Aces and Eights and that Bully Ray has been part of it all along. Well, that is one scenario that could play out. They would kind of have a hard time explaining a couple of things, but one thing would be certain is that Brooke Hogan, it could go that route. Bully Ray would be a little bit too hard. A little bit too tricky, I think, to explain his affiliation with Aces and Eights. But could some type of shock value happen in this particular match in a way where Bully Ray could finally get the title? And honestly, I just don't see that happening. I don't think it's Bully Ray's time. You know, I'm thinking from that marketing standpoint right now, and I can't help but kick back and say to myself, Jeff Hardy, he sells merchandise, he brings in the women, he brings in the kids, he brings in the guys. Jeff Hardy is just universally cool with everybody. I'm saying all that to myself, and I'm also thinking, okay, you're bringing TNA live on the road, Chicago, Illinois, next Thursday. Do we really want to kick it off with Bully Ray? I think Bully Ray needs a little bit more, I don't want to say exposure, but Bully Ray needs a little bit more of a in-depth push to really get him to that dance so that fans can really be behind him. You know, I don't I don't think this is the night. And I know that may disappoint some people. And trust me, I'm a huge Bully Ray fan. I've appreciated how far he's come along. But for some reason, this Sunday, I just don't see it being his night. I think Jeff Hardy is going to retain. But look for maybe this pay-per-view to end on a WTF moment. I mean, if I'm kicking back and I'm booking this... I'm definitely going to have Jeff Hardy pick up the retain, but I would actually have Aces and Eights come out, and I would actually have them destroy Hardy and destroy Bully Ray. Or, better yet, there's an X Factor that is missing from this. We saw him briefly on Impact Wrestling. Would be a very nice little touch to see Matt Morgan come out once again 
interfere in this match, taking out both guys, and maybe this could actually set up a triple threat match between all three of these guys in the coming weeks. Now, remember what Matt Morgan had said after he laid out Jeff Hardy last week. Remember what he said when the cameraman had caught up to him? He said that as far as he's concerned, Jeff Hardy is the TNA champion, and being that, he has something that he wants, and he wants that title. And as far as Bully Ray goes, hey, Bully Ray is associated with Hulk Hogan, which makes him a guilty party. He makes him automatically one of those people responsible for holding him back. So don't be too surprised if maybe we might see Matt Morgan make a huge impact in this match and lay these guys out. It could very well happen. Uh, as far as maybe it being revealed that Brooke Hogan is the one behind Aces and Eights, like that type of a shock value, I don't think we're going to see that uh, at, at this lockdown. I think it's a little bit too soon. I don't think it's quite time storyline-wise for them to pull that trigger just yet. But again, I'm going with Jeff Hardy for the retain. That's going to do it, folks. Let's go on ahead and let's pick it up from the very bottom. And let's work our way back up to the top. Let's recap for y'all right now, just in case you might have missed it. So, for Joey Ryan taking on Joseph Park. Hey, this match makes no sense, but I'm going with Joseph Park. For your X Division Championship match between Zima Ion, Christian York, Kenny Kingston. I am going with Kingston for the win. For Robbie E versus Robbie T, going with Big Rob Terry. Triple Threat Tag Team Championship on the line. We got Daniels and Kazarian taking on Bobby Roode, Austin Aries taking on Chavo Guerrero and Hernandez. I'm going with Bobby Roode and Austin Aries for the retain. But again, bear in mind, that's if Roode shows up. If Roode does not show up, look for Daniels and Kazarian to get the belts. Aces and Nates, Wes Briscoe in the steel cage match against Kurt Angle. Bear in mind, Wes Briscoe's pay-per-view debut match. I've got to go with Briscoe. For the TNA Knockouts Championship, once again, I'm going with Velvet Sky. I think she's going to do something that none of the other knockouts have been able to do in years since Gail Kim has been associated with the company, and that's beat her at lockdown. Remember, Gail Kim undefeated at lockdown. That's going to come to an end this Sunday. Aces and Nates. Garrett Bischoff, Doc, Mike Knox, Mr. Anderson, Devon, taking on Team TNA, Sting, Magnus, Samoa Joe, James Storm, and Showtime Eric Young. I'm going with Aces and Nates. They need to continue their momentum going into the new week. And for the TNA World Heavyweight title contested in a steel cage match, I'm going with Jeff Hardy. For the win. But look for something very interesting to happen. Maybe from a certain Mr. Blueprint. Matt Morgan. And that's going to do it folks. Hey what are your match predictions? We'd love to hear from you. Kick on back. Interact with us on Twitter. At Infinity One Prod. Let us know your match predictions. And if you are spot on. We will give you a shout out live on the air for our post show covering the fallout from TNA Lockdown. And if you're going to be checking this out on YouTube as we do do a remixed edition of this piece, you can also leave your comments. And again, if you're on point, we will show you some love. Hey, the talk of wrestling may end here for now. But be sure to check us out at our website at InfinityOneProductions.com for all the very latest in wrestling related news and so much more. And for a little bit of news that you can use, 
like us on Facebook at Infinity One Productions. Hey, if you're not going to be able to check out the TNA Lockdown Pay-Per-View this weekend, no problem. Little heads up for you all. Beginning at 7.45 p.m. Eastern, if you hop on over to our website over at InfinityOneProductions.com, we're actually going to be providing live results in progress for the pay-per-view. So you can kick on back and just refresh our page every two, four minutes for the latest results. It all leads up to a new episode of the RCWR Post Show immediately airing after the fallout from TNA Lockdown. Join myself and co-host Diamond K as we run down the card and offer our overall analysis of the pay-per-view. It'll be your opportunity to call into the show as the chat line will be open as well as our chat room. Again, that's the RCWR Post Show, and you'll be able to catch that this Sunday at 11 p.m. Eastern right here on blogtalkradio.com. If you are not able to check it out, have no fear. You'll be able to catch it on the downloads. And for our YouTube subscribers, you all will be able to catch a remixed version of it on our channel. All right, boys and girls, that's going to do it. Until we hear from you all this Sunday for the Lockdown Post Show, I'm the one and only the Black Avenger, a.k.a. the Black Azrael, Lee Sanders, wishing you all to be safe and be kind to one another, folks. We will see you this Sunday night for the TNA Lockdown Post Show at 11 p.m. Eastern. Everybody, take care.